Hey, what's up guys? Sam here. And I'll be doing the free video for Friday, December 8th, 2023. So another week is in the books, uh, another week of strength in the market, closing near the highs. Looks like it's been one, two, three, four, five. This would be the sixth week straight up. And it's gotten us right back to these kind of previous uh, double top highs. Um, and now the question is, do we get through or do we pause and then get through later? Um, I think that we will get through. It's just a matter of how and when. And um, I just finished doing the premium video for the fine folks in the gold room. And the predominant signal that we found was right here. So you have a four hour squeeze on the SPY. And from a chart rating perspective, a plus bull with a perfect score. So that's got to be the signal going into next week. Um, we did take a look around the markets um, in the uh, premium video and we looked at bonds which look fine, little stretch but fine. Um, we looked at volatility, VIX. That has a positive divergence and is a consolidation around the 12 strike, 12 and a half. There's a little bit of an issue there, but it's not big enough to overwhelm the predominant signal, which I'm showing you right now on the uh, SPY, but it's one you should be aware of. And then there's a little bit of a signal showing up in the dollar, which might be a leading indicator for bonds. But these signals in the dollar and in the VIX, they're very, very minor compared to the very large signal uh, that's printing here and uh, and there in terms of the A plus bull on SPY. So just because the market's been so easy lately and because Powell is coming up next week and it's his last chance this year for the next month to uh, maybe throw a little bit of cold water on the market, I think there's a way that both signals could play out. I think there's a way where this signal could play out long and then <clears throat> the, um, the nominal signals in the dollar and the VIX could also play out by the end of the week. So what would that look like? It would look like a Monday strong day up, maybe potentially followed by a Tuesday strong day up. Uh, Wednesday, which was Fed day, would then be a down day. And Thursday, and then maybe Friday would be flat. And we'd end up basically breaching this high, right, the, previous, the, the July highs. We'd breach the high, and then we'd end up closing back in the range. And I think that would open up the door for a little bit of a pullback. Now again, this is very speculative because the easy thing to tell you is just to say, hey, you have an A plus setup and a squeeze, this thing's going to the moon, right? That's the easy trade. And I do think that you will see strength early in the week, Monday and Tuesday, um, but leave a little bit of room to be surprised by Wednesday is all I'll say. Um, but even then, I do believe that any type of pullbacks in this market, which would be healthy, uh, will be bought. So I don't expect really too much to change other than potentially a reconnect at some point uh, of the 21 before the thing actually you know basically pull back to the rising 21 before the next move where it actually blasts and makes a new high so that's uh, that's kind of the process there on spy in a nutshell um, a couple things we have in the a couple of irons we have in the flame here is uh, Amazon so keeping it real simple, you'll note that you know if you've been paying attention to the uh, the, the charts lately, you'll note that I have this rating system, uh, which is kind of cool. And what that does is it factors in price, it factors in uh, the trend oscillator, and it factors in the high low pro. And what you know, and it just makes it very simple because it automatically grades out every chart, and it just gives me a simple letter grade, and a 35 would be considered a perfect score. So. You have a perfect score, right? Just, I mean, I'm keeping it as simple as I can, right? A plus, if I see an A plus and a squeeze, I just buy that thing. Does it always work? Probably not. But um, does it work the majority of the time? Yes, yeah, over enough sample sizes that should work. So we do have some Amazon long in the room. Um, we have longs on a lot of the thing stocks, but I'll show you the ones that I'm in. And then today I picked up some uh, some docu with the folks in the gold room as well. Now, I'm going to bring this one to you just because it's a little bit off the beaten path, right? Um, it's not a perfect setup. It's not the one of the fang stocks that you all, you know, 
are very aware of, but I do think that DocuSign here has made a low, and a significant low. And uh, you can see today was kind of a very big volume candle. It gapped down big. That's actually where I got filled. Um, it gapped down very big, and then it closed near the highs, uh, far outpacing the market with huge volume. Earnings is behind us. We have a positive divergence, a double bottom across the COVID lows. And I think this is a $60 stock. So that's kind of the approach I want to take uh, going into next year because that's the, the approach that makes the most sense to me based on the charts. I want to be focused on the mega cap tech, right? The, the mag seven, Amazon, Google, Meta, Tesla, Microsoft, Apple, you know the names. But then I also want to branch out and buy some of this, you know, dumpster diving crap uh, like Docu, right? And I think Docu is actually a pretty good company, but the, the chart itself is crap. And there's a lot of charts that look like this. So maybe a little bit of homework for you guys on the YouTube here. That way we can all collectively help each other. Find some stocks that look like this, where you have a huge move lower, a move up, a move down into a common low, and then a hook, right? So it ends up kind of looking like this. And if you can find some stocks that look like that and they, they grade out better than Docu, put them in the chat, drop them down in the comments, and we'll, we'll review them next week. Right? We'll, I'll actually go through the comments and, and actually um, review them next week. Uh, but Docu, uh, CVNA, I think is uh, a monster. Uh, it has this pattern and it has a huge amount of short interest. So CVNA, uh, I think you continue to see strength in Palantir, ARKK, SoFi, SOFI. Uh, lots of setups like this. So just for the sake of diversity, right, you all are very well saturated when it comes to the MAG-7. You don't need any more uh, <laughs> syllables being said about the MAG-7. But uh, let's find some kind of uh, dumpster diving stocks that uh, might be well positioned in the next year. And the one that I'll leave you with uh, for this video is going to be Docu. So see if one of you guys in the chat or in the comments can uh, can find something good and we'll review it next week. All right, guys. That's my time. Hopefully, it was helpful. Four-hour squeeze on the spy. Watch out for uh, watch out for Powell, and leave us a comment. Leave us a like before you go somewhere else on the YouTube. Helps us with the algorithm, and it's completely free. So, please do leave us that like, leave us that comment, and we would certainly appreciate it. All right, guys. Take care. Have a great weekend. Catch you next week. Cheers. Hey, traders. This is Sam with Simpler Trading. I want to thank you for watching today's video. Hopefully you found the information in it helpful. If you did, leave us a like, leave us a comment. It really does help us out with the algorithm. And if you want to see us trade live with our own real money and be part of the community, come and check us out at simplertrading.com.